Ladies and gentlemen, I want to read you a Washington Post article. This is a Washington Post article by Glenn Kessler. Trump falsely claims he requested 10,000 troops rejected by Pelosi. This is what the Washington Post does. They either lie by omission or emphasize quotes attributed to Trump while downplaying other quotes attributed to Trump that might not suit a particular narrative. So there's no evidence that Trump ever uh, stated criminal, like, you know, ever encouraged criminal conduct towards the vice president at the time. There's no evidence he did anything to coordinate any criminal activity. He has not been charged or indicted for anything to do with that tragic day that I condemn. Okay, the panel with Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger have not found any evidence to send Trump to prison or indict him or prosecute him. It's not happening. Not for that day, not for his tax returns, not for uh, colluding with another country in 2016, not for any of the absurd fantasies that Democrats have tried to foment over the years. Nothing they say is accurate, but there's a great deal of hysteria and this is kind of belief that Trump is capable of anything, yet they can't prove it in a court of law. So this article, Trump falsely claims he requested 10,000 troops rejected by Pelosi. The first question I have is, why didn't Democrats, Pelosi, Schumer, um, the mayor of D.C., the attorney general of D.C., knowing that Trump was capable of anything, knowing that there would be um, uh, pro or demonstrators, pro-Trump demonstrators, why didn't they beef up security around every government building? How hard would that have been to do? But that's another story. Okay, that's another story. It's interesting. Trump is capable of anything at all times. So the mentality, the, the rebuttal would be, well, Pelosi didn't know. And then the next statement is Trump is capable of anything. And his supporters wanted to uh, undermine our democracy. But here, the fact that Trump, this is actually the Washington Post admitting that either Trump said he wanted 10,000 National Guard troops or that he is quoted to have stated, stated this by um, Christopher Miller, one of his top aides. Now, again, if you're going to quote his remarks about the current vice pre or the vice, vice president at that point, or you're going to say that he's responsible because of what he is alleged to have stated, then why don't you then also attribute any uh, exculpatory statements that he might have said? Because if you're going to go use gossip and hearsay only when it suits you, but you're not going to use any hearsay when it helps Trump, I don't, I don't know what kind of journalism this is. Not just the Washington Post. It's all of media. It's all of media. The way they quote-unquote debunk is talking to an expert that agrees with them. They don't ever talk to an expert or a source that disagrees with them. So that's not journalism. That's like the telephone game you played years back. Okay, remember the telephone game? And, you know, the a person starts with a, a phrase or a statement and then it gets completely distorted. And so, um, here, the facts. This is the actual Washington Post and the article, um, like I said, it's, you can read the article. It's right there. The fact that Trump at one point mentioned 10,000 National Guard troops is not new. Well, if it's not new, how on earth is, is it all his fault? On January 22nd, Vanity Fair published an inside look at what transpired at the Pentagon during that fateful day with the reporter, with the reporter in effect embedded with acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller and his top aides during this period. Here's the key section of that article. On the evening of January 5th, the night before, okay, uh, the acting Secretary of Defense, Christopher Miller, was at the White House with his chief of staff, staff Cash Patel. Cash Patel is awesome. They were meeting with President Trump on another issue, Miller told me. But then the conversation switched gears. The President, Miller recalled, asked how many troops the Pentagon planned to turn out the following day. Uh, we're like, we're going to provide, we're, we're not, uh, we're like, we're going to provide any national... Uh, guard support that the district requests. Miller responded. 
And Trump goes, you're going to need 10,000 people. No, I am not talking nonsense. He said that. And we're like, maybe, but you know, someone's going to have to ask for it. At that point, Miller remembered the president telling him, you do what you need to do. You do what you need to do. He said, you're going to need 10,000. That's what he said, swear to God. The reporter, um, Adam uh, Kowalski, asked Miller why Trump threw, threw out such a, a big number. The president, sometimes hyperbolic, as you've noticed, uh, they were gonna, uh, there, there were going to be a million people in the street, I think was his expectation. It turned out Trump's rally attracted mere th- merely thousands. Okay, well, still, uh, I don't even know if mashed potato brains could get uh, 50 or 60 people at any event. But anyway, uh, though even his Fox News interview with Hilton, Trump still claimed the crowd numbered hundreds of thousands of people. Okay, so number one, by the estimate of media, it's, it was mostly, if you want to use the CNN version mostly peaceful because what they did all throughout the summer with one to two billion dollars in property damage and i agree with the cause of why people are demonstrating but i don't condemn and i don't think how i don't know how any democrat can condemn one to two billion dollars in property damage and 19 plus lives lost according to wikipedia but i mean that's the way they operate it's it's always this twisted propaganda this 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 overtly like this this overt, sophomoric, vapid spin that you could see. You see what's taking place. And the way these articles are written is they will emphasize, they will mitigate or or touch upon barely a fact that undermines their entire case. Then they'll focus and they'll emphasize and the majority of the article will be about minutia or... Um, how the the issue of Trump stating he wanted 10,000 um, National Guard, which is completely undermines his whole trying to overthrow democracy and all that. You know, that's not really important because he didn't request it. And Pelosi didn't know. So therefore, he's still, he's still at fault. Even though he's supposed to have wanted, he was supposed to have tried to overthrow our democracy with 10,000 National Guard. How do you do that? But he didn't request it, don't you understand? He did. He's attributed to having said that, which completely then undermines everything else that he's, he's a, a accused of saying. Hit subscribe to this channel. I'll have, uh, we're almost at 200,000 on this channel. I have a segment on the stock market crash channel right after this and the Bitcoin crash channel. So subscribe to all three channels right now. Uh, I predicted everything that's taking place. It's only going to get worse in the stock market and the economy. Go to the description section. Go to, right now to the description section. How many people on YouTube told you exactly what was going to take place in the economy and the stock market and in Bitcoin and crypto? And it was in September of 2021. In October, I was published in The Federalist. And so I did predict all of this. And it's only going to get worse in terms of the economy. But ladies and gentlemen, I'll read you. Um, so it appears to be a guesstimate based on the president's own inflated belief in his ability to draw a crowd. So again, the Washington Post here is trying to just take, just trying to undermine Trump's great ego, but they're also admitting that he is said to have wanted 10,000 National Guard. Okay, but he didn't, it, so it's the same thing with uh, Clinton and the uranium cell. Clinton didn't have the ability to approve a, ura- a sale of uranium. False fact check. Ten Pinocchios. Yeah, but money flew into flew into the foundation, and President Obama didn't veto the sale. You think maybe money into the foundation influenced President Obama? <coughs> Excuse me. You think maybe that was the case? Nobody is accusing Clinton of being uh, omnipotent. She doesn't control the weather. That's true. But millions into the foundation and a very um, questionable sale of 20% at that point of U.S. uranium capacity. Well, President Obama and Democrats were supposed to be these Cold War uh, warriors and hawks. That makes no sense because guess who owned that eventually? The government that Democrats blame everything on. So when the Kremlin eventually owns 20% of U.S. uranium capacity because it purchased the company that was allowed to be given that, President Obama did not veto the sale. And then you had Mueller, who was part of, like, the whole ordeal also. Very bizarre. 
But see, again, if you slice and dice every single story to make Democrats look good and Republicans or Trump look bad, that's not journalism. You might as well just be working for the Democratic Party. Just, be, just become a newsletter. New York Times, Washington Post, what they'll do is they'll fact check things into oblivion. And it'll be, well, we spoke to people. If Trump's numbers didn't emerge in the inner circle of the Defense Department, then it certainly was not given to the Capitol uh, Police or Pelosi's office, as Trump claimed. Again, the fact that he wanted that, if there was a breakdown in communication within his own, um, if, if people below him failed to do their job, okay, then, then, then that's wrong, that he should have insisted upon it and made sure it happened. But you can't say that he's trying to, um, you know, you can't say that he's trying to foment all of this horrendous violence while at the same time admitting that he did want 10,000 National Guard troops. Okay, yes, he didn't request it from D.C. And and maybe his administration never informed Pelosi. Here, and this is the Washington, like many, Trump's, like many of Trump's falsehoods, there's a seed of reality here. There isn't even a seed of reality in any, any of mashed potato brain Joe's falsehoods. He just blatantly lies and gets away with it because there's no running tally. If you had a running tally of all the lies Biden and Clinton and President Obama told, it'd be 10 times the amount of Trump's. But you don't judge, and this is what, this is what I don't understand, like very intelligent, smart people, they don't judge mashed potato brain's Joe They don't use the same standard of judgment when they're talking about lies from the left as lies from Trump. They don't they don't use that standard of judgment. Well, you know, Biden said that inflation was only temporary or that uh, the economy was doing well. Uh, No, it's horrible. We're heading into a recession. Um, But, you know, it wasn't really temporary, but it's not his fault because he didn't know it. It's like. If you want to say, when Trump had a great economy, they were like, fact check, it's not that great, or it's just, it's not the best economy ever, another lie from Trump. And meanwhile, it was like record low unemployment, great economy, GDP up, real wages up. It was fantastic. We had a fantastic economy with Trump uh, until Andrew Cuomo and Democrats tanked their own states gleefully. And they were given um, Emmy Awards for it. Anyway. Give me your thoughts below. They, they, they will do that with, with, with Russia and Trump and accusing Trump with a steel dossier. They will take a, a fake, phony, fabricated document and they'll say it's raw intelligence. And then with Hunter's emails, they'll say, well, there's no evidence it belongs to him. He didn't. He denies it. It's like, well, now we know <laughs> that not only, not only was there people two years ago saying, hey, I worked with they worked with Hunter, and he didn't deny that the emails were, were his. And um, all the all the evidence pointed to the, the emails being legitimate. You had intelligence officials say, "Well, no, that was the that was the work of uh, of Russia without a shred of evidence." But it's an appeal. It's always appeals to authority. Well, we spoke to this person, and they said Trump's claims wrong, but that doesn't make it wrong. <laughs> The reality is, if you're going to use this type of journalism, this this hearsay and gossip, then also use it when it exonerates Trump. You can't accuse Trump of trying to overthrow and undermine the government, while at the same time acknowledging that he has state he stated that he wanted ten thousand uh, National Guard soldiers. Now, should he have requested that? Yeah, or should should there have been a formal request, or should he have pushed for that request to have been made? Yeah. But it doesn't add up. So the whole thing is a theatrical performance. And furthermore, he hasn't been indicted or charged with a crime. And he never will. They will never get him with a crime. And with Clinton and others, they don't get... They, don't, they, they, covered, Clinton, they covered the Clinton email probe up, and then Comey couldn't find intent. That's the one time in history that the Federal Bureau of Investigation didn't want somebody prosecuted. Anyway, hit subscribe to this channel. Ladies and gentlemen, and by the way, like I said, I want a Hillary Trump 2024 or Hillary Clinton DeSantis 2024. I want to redo 2016. We're still living in a matrix, 2016 matrix. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. It's the articles there, and it here's the articles. Trump falsely claims he requested. And then, of course, within the article, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, 
Yeah, there's a seed of truth. Well, a seed of truth. You know, like, like all his, uh, there's a seed. It's that seed of truth, by the way, that would be, um, hold on a second, where? A seed of reality, like many of Trump's falsehoods. There's a seed of reality there. There isn't even a seed of reality to any of the falsehoods pushed by media regarding Trump and Russia. Oh, there were suspicious contacts. No, there weren't. There were also suspicious. If you want to say there were suspicious contacts with Trump and, and the Kremlin, uh, were there not then suspicious contacts between Bill, who met Bill Clinton, who met with uh, Vladimir at his home outside of Moscow? Literally, Newsweek, The Hill. You had Bill Clinton meeting with Putin outside of his home in Moscow while the uranium sale was being approved. You don't think that's suspicious? But again, it's like liberal sentiment has now become fact. You can fall back if you're a journalist on liberal sentiment or appeals to authority only when it suits you. Any authority or expert that agrees with Trump, not truly an authority or expert. And that's how journalism is today. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Hit subscribe right now to all three channels. Thank you.